In today's video, I'll show you three secrets that you can apply into your motion design to really bring it to the next level. These are secrets that no one talks about and can bring your motion design from noob to pro in the simple steps. So let's get into this. Do you know the biggest mistake that beginner editors do? They focus too much on animations and not on the actual design. But remember, it's called motion design. Design with motion. Motion design is still design. So you can have the best animations in the world, but if your typography is wrong, your composition is not good, or even your hierarchy is badly done, no amount of cool, crazy animations will save your motion design. If you're seeing the channel for a while now, you know that we like a good cooking analogy. So think of it like cooking. The animation is the seasoning of a dish. It enchants the dish. But if the ingredients, in this case the design, are bad, no amount of seasoning will save the dish. So before you even touch keyframes, make sure that you master the typography of your motion design. Check your layout and composition. Follow design principles like rule of thirds, symmetry, and alignment. A messy layout rings everything, even the smoothest animations. If there is any text, make sure that you master your typography. Make sure you use the right fonts, you pair them well, and you use proper hierarchy. A bad typography instantly makes the design feel amateur. And last but not least, keep things intentional. Every element should have a purpose. Don't animate things just because you can animate it. Animate them because they enchant the message, they help the viewer understand the context. Good design stands out on its own. Animations should be the finishing touch, not the foundation. And with this, I want to touch on a topic that I told you before, that is visual hierarchy. So visual hierarchy is what the viewer sees first. If everything on your design is fighting for attention, nothing really stands out. You probably heard of a term called eye tracking. So pretty much with eye tracking, you track the viewer's eyes into what you want in the scene. So hierarchy is how you control your viewer's eyes. Think about it in this way. You are the camera pointing and focusing on whatever you want the viewer to look at. So in the screen right now, I'll show you two pictures. The first one, the basics of visual hierarchy. So you can see how important hierarchy is. It changes with size, contrast, repetition, color, alignment, proximity, texture and style, and so much more that we're gonna talk in a little bit. And you also have this poster with some text and you can see how hierarchy affects in this poster so a little challenge for you i want you to pause the video right now and put a comment down on which phrase have you read first i'm super curious to see what you answered i'll be watching all of the comments and hearting every single one of them so with this you can manipulate the viewers into looking where you want so let's establish some things about hierarchy first things first like your crush said size matters Bigger elements are seen first. If something is important, make it bigger. You see this a lot in movie posters. You see the big title with the big characters. This is the first thing that you look at. You're not gonna tell me that on movie posters, you see the little lines below the main title. Another thing that you should focus on is that contrast creates focus. Use brightness, color, and movement as a strategy. A bright colored object on a dark background will always grab the attention first. You see this a lot in TV documentaries. When they want you to focus on something, they darken the background and they do just a little circle of brightness so you can focus on that exact object. A super important thing is spacing is Key. Don't clutter. Let the elements breathe so the eye can move smoothly across the design. If you have a super busy background with a lot of elements moving around, we cannot really tell on what to look at. So make sure that you also have what's called fill space. Fill space are spaces on the scene that it's filled with nothing, only the background. So add your elements as you want, but make sure that you do some spacing between them and let the elements breathe. Another one, as we talked on the last video, use depth to separate elements. Foreground elements should be sharper and more detailed, background elements should be more blurred or desaturated to create natural depth. A motion design scene is way more pleasing to watch whenever there is depth. You can see by my camera itself that here on the background my lights are blurred and the highlights are blown out 
which makes a very pleasing scene to look at. And last but not least for visual hierarchy, make sure that you have guided motion. And I know that this can sound weird, but hear me out. You need to animate in a way that leads the viewer's eyes. For example, if a text slides from the left, the next element should naturally come from the motion path, rather than just jump randomly on the screen. Think of it like directing a movie. You're telling the viewer where to look, what to feel, and what matters the most. Without proper hierarchy, your designs will feel scattered and super chaotic, which we don't want. And now, we come to the last secret of this video and one of the most important ones in motion design, that is, blending the scene. Most people that come to me asking for motion design tips and really how to improve their motion design, the most common problem with their motion design is that they are flat. And with this I don't mean to be rude, but there is no shadows, there is no lining, there is no color correction, and all of these elements is really what makes you stand out from other editors and stand out your motion design. So I'm gonna show you how I do lining, shadows and color correction in this video, so you can use it correctly and stop having your designs disconnected and feel unnatural. So let's get into this. So first things first, shadows add depth. Don't just slap drop shadow on everything, that's the biggest mistake that editors do. Use soft, realistic shadows that match the environment and light source. And how do you do that? Let's do it together. So first things first, let's set up where our light is coming from. So in my case, I'll put my light on the top right corner on the scene. So everything that is light will come from top right. So let's add our elements, in this case I'm putting Ronaldo, let's add our shadow that should be on the left side of our composition because it's the opposite side that our light is adding. And if you have struggled with this, you probably have one of this, a phone. What I truly recommend you to do is grab the flash on your phone and put your flashlight in the same corner that you're doing your motion design. So in my case, it's top right. And now I'm gonna grab my left hand and putting in this hypothetical scene and see where the shadow comes on. And in this case, because the light comes from top right, the shadow is on bottom left. So let's do the same in our scene. So here we have Ronaldo, let's add the shadow shadow and boom, perfect. So how do I do the shadow? I duplicated Ronaldo, I enabled layer 3D, I messed up with the rotation so it feels like a shadow is coming from his feet. Now I apply a fill effect and put it on black, apply a little bit of a Gaussian blur so it doesn't look so sharp and it looks realistic and I also lower the opacity for around 25%. And there we go, we have our perfect shadow. Now let's get into lining. Lining also directs the attention, brightness naturally pulls the eye. So let's highlight our elements so it looks realistic on the scene. So this is pretty simple. So what I do is duplicate the layer that I want to do the lining on, apply a fill effect, but this time put everything on white. And now with the mask tool, I mask the edges of my subject so it looks like it's been brightened by our top right lining. Then I go to the mask settings and just apply a ton of mask fatter. If you are unhappy with the result, you can just adjust the max expansion so you have more or least lining into the subject. Myself, I like it super subtle, so I only do the edges. And now, for the final touch, let's apply the color correction, which I like to create a new adjustment layer, apply a little curves, mess up with the highlights, mess up with the shadows. I also like to add a little bit of deep glow, just super subtle so the scene feels feels alive, and last but not least, I like to apply a little lens flare into our source of lining. And now, there is the final result, and to really justify the first point of this video that design is way better than having a cool animation, now let's add the seasoning and let's add a little animation into the scene like this. And here's the finishing result of this whole video. These principles make the difference between okay motion design into super advanced motion design. Apply them and you will see that your motion design will go straight to a level. And if you want to go deeper into these secrets or discover way, way, way more secrets that I have for you, join the Editing Nexus, a school community that teaches you the skills in order to progress in your editing career and really feel proud of your work. Thank you everyone for watching and I see you in the next video.